Welcome one and all to Fanblade Instruments. Today we are going to design a bass guitar from scratch. Step one is to get some paper, lay it out, stick it down nice and flat. You want to make sure that it's parallel to the edge of your bench so that when we come along with the T-square and some rulers later we can make sure that uh, everything winds up exactly square and, and even. Uh, a bass guitar is longer than that one meter ruler there so had to mark a little mark on the T-square, mark that in a few places and then draw the center line in two pieces but drawing it making it nice and dark so that you can see it and you can always reference everything from it. The center line is really the very basic starting point for any bass guitar design. Uh, then you need to mark in your scale positions, there's the nut and the bridge and draw a line for the nut and the bridge. Next you want to mark in your fret positions and I do this with uh, the same ruler and here's a handy hint, tape the ruler down. <laughs> when it moves around it's no fun at all. Um, on that pad of paper I have all the fret positions already calculated, I just use an app uh, I just it's called uh, fret scale calculator you can find it on the uh, Google Play Store or I'm sure there's a version for Android um, you try and be as precise as you can but when you're dealing with something that's measured in tenths of a millimeter and the pencil lead that you've got is half a millimeter that's really as accurate as you can hope to be it's not going to make a massive difference and I don't even have to do this on the design but it's good practice because when you come to market on the wood you want to be you know, good at doing it. So that's the fret positions marked. Uh, this is the markings for the bridge. If you watched the previous video you'll know the spacing is 16.5 millimeters so that's those and I'm marking the nut at, uh, with, at 11 millimeters and because I was concentrating on videoing and not doing what I was doing I made a mistake and put one too many in. So I had to uh, erase one. Oh well. Next we're going to join up the strings We've got so that we can get a, a, a representation on the page of where the strings are going to go and the taper of the neck. Um, so now we've got the headstock and we want to locate the tuners going to measure the shaft there and I think it's 12 millimeters which means we want the center of the hole we drill to be six millimeters from each string and we want the width of them to be able to have your thumb get through it so that you don't bash into them I think that's about 55 mil there and then you simply mark them out mark out the length of each tuner draw a perfectly square line making sure that you're getting it on the right side because you want the tuners to go you want the string to curve around the tuner away from the center line and mark out six mil on each of those and then draw in the final center points for the holes in uh, nice and bold Next we're going to draw in the edge of the neck and that's just 4mm from the out, from each outer, outer string. Again, make it nice and dark. Half of the reason for drawing this out full scale is that it's uh, far easier to figure out exactly how wide the neck needs to be when we come to actually make the neck. Uh, we've got the, uh, the drawing to grow off. Next, purely because I can, I'm just uh, using the set square there to draw in all the fret positions. Again, you don't strictly have to do this on the drawing, but it's good practice to get your eye in. And also, if your calculations are off, if you've written them down wrong, uh, you'll notice that a fret is out of place, so you'll know your calculations might be wrong. So this is a good way of checking that. Then when you get your last fret in there, you just want to draw in the very end of the neck. I just use a compass, mark a point, and get a small curve on the corner draw a line in between those and just fill those in 
clean it up a bit, and there we have the end of our neck. Next we need to work on the headstock design. I'm going to do a full video on headstock design uh, and uh, tuner placement and things like that and machine heads in general, but effectively what we're doing here is we are figuring out how much wood we need and now we've got the basic parameters we can actually draw in the shape. This is where the art comes in. What we've done so far is draw in the scientific uh, requirements for an instrument to play properly. We've drawn the neck and the frets and the string spacing and we've got all of that there. This part is really just kind of uh, art. You just find the find curves decide you don't like them, rub them out, draw them in better, and gradually you get to the point where you've refined the line uh, enough that it's you know, a, a, a nice, uh, I want to say, uh, curvaceous, sort of aesthetically nice to look at. Um, you know, some people might like a, uh, like on, like flying V's and things, sort of, uh, more hard rock guitars uh, are very sort of straight edged and pointy, that's fine, it's easy to do, just do it with a ruler. But uh, I prefer something that's got a, got a few curves in it, I think it looks nicer, but that's just my style. This can be quite a process as well. It can take quite a long time to do this, I've spent days going back over designs and just redrawing lines and working out how to get it to sit just right, just nicely, just get it to just the right point where it's just nice. Then when you do finally have it exactly the way you want it, a good idea is to go over the whole thing uh, with the pencil and draw in as thick a line as you can. Uh, and uh, that'll help you trace the design off later when we come to transfer the design onto the templates for actually making the thing because don't f <laughs> so I'm doing a voiceover while watching this footage I probably should have edited that bit out um, yes here we go drawing the drawing the line in nice and dark so that we can trace through it later and transfer the uh, the design Just round that corner off a little bit there we go nice It can be quite a long process, it can be quite a slow process, you very rarely will get it right first time. Uh, in fact I shot this video three times. But that's alright because I think the end result is well worth it. Look at that. Now we come to the body. Um, this base is going to be for a friend of mine who wanted a kind of a Thunderbird-esque kind of a thing. So we're looking at uh, kind of an offset uh, body, the, the, the lower bout kind of protruding up and back. Um, I'm not copying straight off a Thunderbird though, I didn't even look at a picture of one. Uh, simply because Gibson can be a little bit litigious when it comes to people copying their designs. So this is designed entirely by scratch, you can see me doing it now. F again just finding the line that works best standing back, looking at it, walking around the table, thinking about it, drawing lines, erasing them, and every time you draw one line it's going to have an effect on how all the others look, so you sort of have to constantly check as you're going that you've made one area look really really nice but it doesn't fit with the rest of it. So you, you and also knowing exactly where the hardware and everything is going to go can change the look of the instrument so that uh, you know you might want to make things a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller or change things around. Had some extra trouble trying to find the right, just 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 the right curve for the top bout here. Nothing really seemed to fit, and then I consulted with the uh, fellow who the space is going to be for, and he said, "Oh, just make it a little bit pointier." So fair enough. So I did. So all that work on uh, on that side, did it again on the other side, I just wanted to try a few different things. Just 
still not sure. Second guessing myself. That looked quite good, but I second guess myself again. <laughs> I thought, no, how, how about less? Less is more? Nope, <laughs> less just looked dumb. <laughs> so we put that back. Made too many mistakes, decided to draw the entire side of that, uh, uh, that lower cutaway again. very gradually takes shape again just going over it and very very thick pencil makes the uh, the transfer process easier one thing I like to do sometimes is actually uh, uh, just design the body shape straight onto a piece of wood so I can cut that out directly and have it uh, have that as a template if I'm doing multiple runs of a, of a guitar if I want to make uh, two or three or ten then having the template of the shape there is uh, extremely helpful um, but this one is just going to be a one-off oh, I might make more if uh, more people on YouTube there like it then uh, then leave a comment if you'd like me to make you one There's the uh, final design as it sits. I'll look at that for a few more days. That's the photo I sent to the fellow. He quite liked it. And uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.